Hey guys, so we are here to read the next chapter of The Year of Billy Miller. So this is um, chapter two of the father section. So, while mom would grade papers in the dining room, the kitchen became a diorama workshop. Mama had found three shoe boxes in her closet that she was willing to give up. One for Billy, one for Ned, and one for Sal. Billy had gotten scissors, crayons, markers, construction paper, tissue paper, tape, and glue from the basement. Papa had thrown together some odds and ends from the garage that he thought might prove useful. Ned brought two plastic sharks and some seashells from a Florida vacation to use for his diorama. And Sal had asked Papa if she could please, please, please use glitter, which was kept in a secret hiding place out of her reach. At first, Papa seemed jolly and had good suggestions to offer. He showed Billy how to replicate a cave by crumbling up a piece of gray construction paper, then smoothing it out and gluing it into the inside of the box. Because the paper had crisscrossed with folds and wrinkles, it really gave the shoe box the appearance of worn silvery rock. Billy worked diligently. He had a vision in his head of how his diorama would turn out. He wanted to make three or four bats hanging from the top of the cave, and he wanted to make one big bat with its wings spread to look as if it was flying. Billy cut several bats out of black construction paper. He worked quickly. The sleeping, hanging bats were fairly easy to make, especially. Essentially, they were black ovals with, ta with tabs on top on one end. Billy folded the tabs and taped them to the inside of the inside top of the shoe box. He had some difficulty with the flying bat. His hands couldn't get the scissors and the paper to do exactly what he wanted them to do. After a few failed attempts, Billy grew frustrated. He ripped up yet another lopsided bat and tossed it onto the floor, grunting. Hey, said Papa, what's the problem? Nothing, really no answer. Do you need some help? asked Papa. No, said Billy. He wanted to do it on his own. Okay, said Papa. Fine. The sharpness had returned to his voice. Billy finally cut out a bat that was acceptable, but he couldn't figure out how to attach it to the box and also make it appear as if it were flying, suspending, suspended in air. Now will you help me? Billy asked Papa. Papa nodded. Billy explained his idea. We can do this, said Papa. He cut a strip of heavy paper and folded it many times like an accordion. He glued one end of the strip to the bat the, and the other to the inside of the box. He held the glued ends firmly for what seemed like forever. You have to be patient with glue, he said. At last, Papa angled the shoe box so that opening the opening faced Billy. How is that? asked Papa. If Billy looked at the diorama straight on, he couldn't see how the bat was fastened in the, to the box. It truly looked as if the bat was hanging in the air. Very good, said Billy. You're welcome, said Papa. Thank you, said Billy. He shook the diorama gently and the bat bounced. Careful, warned Papa. It's pretty delicate. To complete his cave, Billy chose pebbles from Papa's assortment of things from the garage and glued them to the bottom of the box. He was proud of what he had done. He had been so focused on his diorama, wrapping in a cocoon of concentration, that he hadn't paid much attention to Ned's or Sal's. When he finally checked them out, a sinking feeling took hold of him. Papa had helped Ned make an ocean from different shades of blue tissue paper, which he'd crinkled and layered. And because Ned had made had used real seashells and store-bought sharks, his diorama looked professional. He'd even made two streaks of blood trailing from the shark's mouth with a glitter glue, a perfect gruesome finishing touch. Sal's diorama looked great too. Her ocean was messy, patches and globs of blue and green and silver glitter. But Papa had made a big, beautiful replica of a raindrop out of yellow construction paper. It filled most of the shoebox. 
In comparison, Billy thought, thought, felt that his project looked like it was made by a two-year-old. Sal watched Billy scrutinize his diorama. Mine's better, she said. Ned's, too. Mine's dumb, Billy mumbled. No, it's not, said Papa. Mine's pretty, said Sal. She was radiant. She hugged her diorama, swaying. Papa, can we make a diorama for all the drop sisters? Diorama, said Billy. Not today, said Papa. Ned giggled. Hey, Billy, your big bat looks like a flying, like a pair of flying underwear. Black, dirty underwear. He giggled again. Well, said Billy, yours only looks good because you have store-bought sharks. Any positive feeling had been drained away. Billy turned toward Sal, and yours only looks good because Papa did it. If he hadn't helped, yours would look like garbage. Hey, said Papa sternly, enough. He brought his hands down on the table. Smack. Then silence. Papa rarely raised his voice, so when he did, it felt as if something in the universe had shifted. Sal broke the silence. Papa, your beard is sparkly, she said. Glitter, said Ned. That's the least of my problems, said Papa. I'm never having a beard when I grow up, Billy said under his breath. He was mad at Papa. Billy blamed him for the way he felt. Mama entered the kitchen. What's going on here, she asked. She tucked her red marking pencil behind her ear, which had made Billy think of Mrs. Silver's chopsticks. Papa whisked past Mama, tapping her on the shoulder. Tag team, he said, your turn. He disappeared out the back door. Mama scanned the room. The tabletop and floor were strewed with scraps and wads of construction paper and tissue paper. There was a dusting of glitter everywhere. I can tell you've been working hard, she said. Are you going to make a diorama too? Asked Sal. Mama sighed. No, honey, she said. I'm going to help you all clean up. And that's your chapter for tonight. Thank you.